Hello, today we have a product from Immersion RC called the RF Power Meter and this was very kindly supplied by my buddy Bob over in Florida. Thanks very much Bob, he managed to organise getting this for me. What is the RF Power Meter? Well essentially it's a way of telling if your VTX is putting out the signal you think it is. What you get in the box here is this little thing, a couple of other bits and the general idea is you plug in your output from the VTX into this this will then talk about what power it's getting out and you're able to work out if it's the right power or not. We, we generally take things for word that if something says I do 200 milliwatts that it's going to have 200 milliwatts but it's often slight differences in the channels you're on or indeed if it is 200 milliwatts or if it's lower or higher and, and what happens. So this isn't your thing that an average normal fly would perhaps want to use unless they were having a specific problem and then it's kind of a thing of like well I wish I had one of those but it really it's cheaper just to buy a replacement VTX but it's very handy for me where I test a lot of VTXs and, and things like that I can check to see if they're putting out the power I want them to or I think they should be and it's a very easy way of comparing stuff it's also very useful at race events one of the things you can do with it is calibrate it to 25 milliwatts and you can hold this little wand it has over someone else's antenna to see if that's about 25 milliwatts or it's like way above just by literally touching them you don't have to like plug them in and stuff anyway let's go into close up and see exactly what you get in the box and then we'll talk about how it actually uses it and I'll check it out there's a lot of stuff which is new to me uh, this doesn't really deal in milliwatts it deals in dbm so i have to start considering different ways of measuring power output but i'll, I'll convert these back into milliwatts so at least we're we're on a common language there anyway let's go close up okay so the power meter this is what you get in the box there's not much to actually there is the meter itself there is this little antenna and i believe the idea of this one is you can touch other antennas to see if it's radiating more power than you want and it's almost impossible to get a box but here's a little adapter so if you haven't got that version you can have that version instead female to male that's sma i think not rpsma i can't remember and you have much to do here we've got the little button this tells you what's going on and then we've got this menu here to be fair i don't know really what i'm doing but it looks like you can go one way for some sort of signal thing and carry on doing that and if you press the button you get into all sorts of bits and then you can turn it off again and there is a USB charge port there. First thing I'm going to do is read the instructions because I really can't tell you what any of this means yeah, apart from the fact, I don't know, is this like noise floor or what? That's our range. I don't know. I don't know anything. Right, yeah, read the manual, work out what to do and then we'll we'll look at what to do with uh, plugging things in and testing them. Well, I've read the manual, I've gathered together some VTXs I thought we'd check out and see what we get here. First up, these, some of these are quite old. This is the old Immersion RC 600 milliwatt. Back in the olden days, we had to change the channel using dip switches. This only uh, used F, or the Immersion channel, so this is set to F1, which was default. So I'm going to screw this in using the adapter, which basically lets you connect SMA to SMA. Now this is turned on and 5750 is the closest I can get. F1's actually 5740, uh, but that's about it. Mode-wise we want average, and that's because the VTX transmit continuously. There's, there's no gaps or anything. If you were using a radio and you wanted to look at that, that's like a pulsed thing, so you really need to measure the peaks. Otherwise the average would take all the bits where it's not transmitting. Anyway, where are we? So change that to average, and at the moment we've got obviously nothing there. So let's plug in a battery, and we are getting 27.78 dBm or 593 milliwatts. So it's, it's falling off slightly, it's going around a little bit, but that is a pretty good measurement. It's uh, said it would be about 600 and it is 600. Back in the day I had lots of conversations with uh, Sander who was at uh, Immersion RC and he talked about how good their stuff was. Well, that was falling off a bit. But yeah, that's pretty good. I also found things like this guy. This is a little Umway. I, I remember flying this in the past and I'm thinking that's really good for 200. 
So it's always a question of, well, is it is it 200 or is it something else? Let's find out. Again, this is on F1. So let's plug that guy in. And uh, oh, it's a bit more powerful than it says. 270, 268, it's putting out more power than it said it would. And this is the problem sometimes. It's like sometimes the Chenuron can give lots of power, sometimes the Chenuron can give less power. Um, again, this is a dip switch one, so I'm not going to change the power, uh, the channels on this one, but interesting to see. And then we have uh, this guy, the TS8523. I remember reviewing this on my channel, and I had, um, I think, a couple of them. And I had a problem with uh, noise on one of them. And I've plugged this in before, and I think I realise why I have the noise issue. Again, this is another dip switch setting. This is set to uh, F1. And again, this should be putting out 200 milliwatts of power. And if we turn on, we are getting nearly 500. So yeah, that one's a problem. And when you're sort of out flying with friends, thinking, oh yeah, we should be okay, you, you'll really notice a difference if your friend flies away from you and you're a bit closer because you're putting out that much more power. That's uh, serious amounts. So I thought it might be quite good to test something a little bit more up to date. This is the Rush Ultimate Plus. Uh, Rush are my, generally my favorite VTX, not so much because of the power, but because they're very, very clean. And this one's got some buttons so I can easily change the power. This goes 25, 200, 500, 800. And this will measure without an attenuator up to one watt so I can go all the way up and see what happens. Now again, this is set to F1, but I should be able to change the channels easily on this one because it's just a button press. Obviously this would support smart audio on your quad, but useful to know it's a button press. So we're starting out and we've got the green LED and that should be 25 milliwatts. And you see this is coming up slightly below at just 20. So let's go up to uh, 200 milliwatts. And now it's going slightly above. We've got 230 odd there, but fairly accurate. If we go to 500, jumping around between sort of 500 and 530, that's a bit erratic, isn't it? And go to 800 and yeah, that's pretty much on there. Let's go back to the 25 because I want to know what happens if we change channel. At the moment we're getting about 15 milliwatts of power on uh, F1. If we go to F2, where's the channel button? And that would make it uh, 57.60. Still about 15. Channel 3. Channel 3 should be 57.80, which is closer to there. Still got about 16. Channel 4, which is bang on 5,800. 16. Channel 5, which is 58.20. Still around 15. Channel 6, which is 58.40. 18, channel 7, which is 5860, about 17 again, and channel 8, which is 5880, coming up about 20. So a little bit of variance there, and I'm sure there would be on all the other ones as well. But it's interesting to see how well or badly something is calibrated. And this certainly goes under on the 25, but slightly over on the other ones. I'm just going to unplug it. Now, the other thing I was interested to show is using the wand. So the idea here being, if we go along to this bit, what we can basically do is look at the irradiated power from an antenna. Decide If we were to sort of look at this and say, yes, that's a good... 25 milliwatts, that's going to be our basis. We could base all the other quads on that, and this is kind of race director stuff. 
Okay, so this is transmitting at 25 milliwatts. If we take our wand, hold it against the output, I don't know where's best, about there-ish, and we say zero defined, you can see there, if we, to measure this, that's approximately on the money. We'd say, yep, you're good. If we were to up the power, let's up it to 200 milliwatts, and go do the same test, we'd say, oh, hang on a sec, you're like, 10 dB above what's allowed, and 10 dB is quite a lot, as you know. 11 there, and we'd say, oi, that's wrong. Get it, get it sorted, get it back. And so put it down to 25, and we'd say, that's better, yep, yeah, we can accept that, that's, that's good. So this is, the idea of this is race director can just touch and decide if that's allowable or not. Obviously there's gonna be some variation, and this is not super accurate, as we're just testing sort of the, the, the power coming off of the antenna, which is the sort of irradiated power, which is not as accurate as plugging in, but give you a good idea if, if someone's wildly over, I, if I was to whack that up to 800, it's like, oh my goodness, you've gone crazy. Sort it out. Well, that was VTXs, but the other thing, of course, you can measure is 2.4. And to do that, we just go into here We'd set our megahertz to two point four and we change our mode to peak. Um, I'm using this external one basically because I need this extension to do stuff with. If I turn it on Welcome to the other good thing I can do is actually change the power here. Now this should be set to 10 milliwatts when it comes up, uh, which it is, and I'm seeing about 15, which is interesting. So what happens if I change the power a bit again? TX power, there we go. And so if I go to 25 milliwatts, it jumps up to about 33. So let's go to 50, that's a bit better, like 50, 51, and 100, gives me about 115, not too far out, 250, 267, a little bit more out, fans come on, and 500 is giving about 490, so that's pretty good. So let's go back to 10. Because the other thing we can do with this is actually use the graph. This is uh, pretty hopeless for using with a VTX because um, you've got constant power there. But with this guy, and we can change the way the span works, we can see basically the packets. And what we're looking at there is, is this 20 millisecond span is like the packets jumping around because this pulses the radio signal every uh, x milliseconds looking at a 10 millisecond sp span there it looks like uh, well less than 10 milliseconds and we can change our span just by doing this giving us this much which is really quite interesting very much a sort of spectrum analyzer type thing of, of your radio so you can see what's happening and what's jumping about there. If you notice there, I've got the antenna back on and it's still going at 10 milliwatts. And I thought it'd be interesting to use this uh, peak because all I need to do is just get closer to the antenna and you can see, it can see that it's getting transmitted on fairly accurately. As we move away, it's a little bit more all over the place because there's a lot of 2.4 noise around here. But look at that, isn't that clever? And of course, it's not just 5.8 and 2.4 you can measure with this thing. Although it's got a reasonable amount of uh, 5.8 channels there, all the way up to 6,000, if you go down, aside from 2.4, we've got 1.2, which some people still use on a VTX. We've got 90868, so if you're flying Crossfire, or even ELRS, or heavens forbid, R9, 
you can measure that uh, for free free for people still running things like Dragon Link and stuff that exist and even 72 megahertz and 35 megahertz what an interesting little device this is and I'm going to be using it every time I come across a new radio or module or VTX and stuff like that hopefully that's going to give me a much better indication of what the VTX or radio actually does and how it works over time and if there's any differences in using different frequencies and things like that it's a really handy diagnosis tool the the other thing I noticed is whilst watching the video back I saw when I plugged in that original 600 milliwatt IRC uh, VTX that the power started dropping off and I think that's a uh, an interesting use case as well because sometimes it's like you start up and everything's fine but how is it after that VTX heats up and has been used for 10-20 minutes? Is it still good or has the power dropped off or differed in some way? Now one thing you shouldn't do on this, and I've been quite careful to do it, though I went over it by about 10 seconds testing one of them, is if your power input into here is more than 500 milliwatts, then don't run it for more than 30 seconds at a time or all the internals heat up and that could throw off the measurements for next time. Now, Again, if you wanted to use it for a long time to find out what happens, then an attenuator is needed. And it's kind of the same if you want to go above uh, 1000 milliwatts or, or 1 watt. So I've got VTXs that go up to 2.5 watts, which obviously didn't test here because they would be too much for this. Um, you don't need great big attenuators. They're saying only a 3 dB attenuator for measuring up to 2 watts and a 6 a DB attenuator for measuring up to 4 watts but they do advise getting fairly decent make uh, so it's not super cheap but I'd, I'd really like to get a couple to find out how I can measure stuff uh, of higher rates and see if it's actually putting out the power it says it will. The other thing it says it will do is measure digital signals absolutely fine as well. They tested with uh, HD0 and it was the same power output very very close to sort of a professional standard uh, spectrum analyzer. So that's that's really interesting because I've now got the walk snow stuff and I was very interested to see is it true about the power output and I've got stuff like this little base quad here which doesn't seem to talk back to the goggles and say what the power output is because it's supposed to go up to 350 milliwatt and I can set it in the goggles to like 1200 but clearly it's not going to do 1200 what's happening there so lots of interesting cases to use it and really it's it's a little miracle because the alternative to this is, is thousands and thousands of dollars uh, where you're talking about like professional grade uh, lab equipment for measuring this sort of thing. A again, this isn't as accurate, but it's pretty accurate. Uh, very, very close. And all those frequencies we saw have been specifically calibrated and tested so they work with those. So really interesting. As I said, not for everybody. If you're interested in seeing how your stuff works particularly, it's for you. Um, if you're a race director and you just want to check people's uh, power output isn't as high that's going to be really useful um, and for me very useful so thanks very much to Bob for organizing getting this for me and I'll be doing it some more there is of course no product links and stuff so just you know find if you're interested find it in your area see if you can get it locally delivered that sort of thing and try and get one if you can anyway this has been the little IRC uh, RF power meter and I'll be using it in the future expect to see it some more and I hope that video is helpful I'll catch you in the next one bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.